Hi guys, I'm Dr. Caitlin McGee, aka Lurkaderp. I'm a physical therapist and I'm here with five ergonomic tricks you can use to prevent injury so you can play more and hurt less. First thing you want to make sure you have a good setup for your back. You want your chair to be supporting you throughout your play session um, because your core is essential to provide support to your extremities. So if, you're, if your back and your core aren't supported, your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and hands aren't going to get the support that they need either. Um, most importantly, you don't want to spend all of your time sitting perfectly straight. That puts a lot of compressive stress on your spine. Similarly, you don't want to spend all your time leaning forward, especially not in that hunched back of Notre Dame position where your back is all rounded. The best thing to do is to be leaning back and letting your chair support you. That's not to say that you should be slouching, you should still be keeping your core muscles engaged, um, but letting that back rest support you, give you the good lumbar support, uh, is what your body really needs. Uh, the second thing you want to pay attention to is the setup for your arms. You want to make sure that your armrests are level and even with your desk. That way your wrists aren't uh, extended too far up or flexed too far down. Um, your forearms are supported to release strain on your forearms as well as on your shoulders. Uh, and this lets you put your hands in a good position to keep your fingers where they need to be without excessively moving your wrists. You also want to make sure that that arm setup allows your wrists to be in a neutral position from side to side. You don't want them tilted too far out or tilted too far in. Um, both of those things put a lot of strain on your nerves. And last but not least, if you have a wrist rest on your desk, you want to make sure that the meaty part of your carpal tunnel is never resting directly on it. Instead, use the heel of your hand where there's bone and muscle in place to pre prevent injury to the underlying structures. The third thing you want to pay attention to is taking breaks as necessary. The thing that we recommend would be 30 to 60 minutes. That's not always feasible. Sometimes you're stuck in a two hour long game. Um, so in situations like that, pay attention to those times when you can take breaks. During drafting, during queuing, every time you're dead, when you go back to fountain. Just pay attention to your body during those times. If you can, take a second to stretch. If you can't take a second to stretch, at least pay attention to what's feeling tight, what's feeling loose, what feels like it needs your attention when you have a chance. That way when you do have a break that gives you a little more time, you are able to address those issues before they build up and you need to come see me. The fourth thing you want to do is actually use stretches during your break times. The three most important stretches you can do are for your forearm extensors, for your forearm flexors, and for your thumbs. The one you want to do for uh, extension is take your hand out in front of you. You're going to start by just bringing your palm down. If that's not enough of a stretch through here, you can add in bending your fingers underneath. If that's still not enough of a stretch, you can straighten out your elbow. You should be feeling this all the way up straight through your forearm to your elbow. You never want to overstretch to the point that you're feeling pain. You only want to go to the point that you're feeling an actual stretch on tight muscles. Similarly, you can stretch in the other direction for your flexors. You're going to bring your palm down towards the ground. If that's not enough of a stretch, add in your fingers. If that's still not enough of a stretch, straighten out your elbow. This one people really have a tendency to overhaul on. You don't need to pull that hard just to the point that you feel a stretch through your forearm. The last one to do, take your thumb, make a fist, tuck the thumb inside of it, and just bring your hand down towards your pinky, what we call ulnar deviation. Um, you should feel this right across your wrist. Um, this may be slightly uncomfortable, but if it's uncomfortable, ease off of it. Again, it's not to the point of pain, it's just to the point that you're stretching a tight muscle. The last thing you want to pay attention to is when you have gotten to that point where you haven't taken enough breaks, when you haven't done your stretches, or when your setup hasn't been supporting you, uh, that you use either ice or heat appropriately. Um, this is just a general suggestion. This is not to say that any one specific injury requires ice or heat. But generally speaking, when you have inflammation and swelling, you want to use ice. Up to 20 minutes at a time um, can go about every hour you can ice. Uh, you always want to keep something between the ice and your skin like a paper towel so that you don't get freezer burn essentially. Uh, that's for inflammation and for swelling. If you have a tight muscle, that's when you want to use heat. So heat may make you feel good, uh, but if you are inflamed and swollen, it's going to promote inflammation and make that worse. So ice to reduce inflammation, heat to reduce muscle tension. And that's it. Those are the five things that you can do very vaguely and very generally uh, to take care of yourself and play more and hurt less.